Now, the Subway final word. Earlier this week, the Pens got the word. Pascal Dupuis out at least six months while he's being treated for a blood clot in his lungs. The panel debates who should go where and with whom in trying to uh, figure things out on the lines. I'm Albie Oxenrider with tonight's panelist, Mark Cabali, Rob Rossi, John Staggerwald. Topic two with Dupuis out for the season. Should Horquist be on the line with Malkin or Crosby? Let's start with Rob Rossi. So there's no easy answer to this because Sidney Crosby's going into another one of his funks. I think he has one goal in his past 12 games. Uh, he doesn't look like the same player right now since they moved Hornquist off that line. But that said, the Penguins need scoring depth, and you can't continue to give Evgeny Malkin third and fourth line wingers, which is what they would be doing if they don't put Hornquist on that line, unless they're willing to separate Crosby and Kunitz and then flip Kunitz and Hornquist. So they have a problem. Look, they needed a winger before Pascal Dupuis was hurt to play with Evgeny Malkin on that second line. Now they need two, and, and they don't have that many things to deal with in terms of they don't have that many pieces to move that, uh, from their system that will bring guys in. They're going to have to give up a roster player. It's a tough spot for general manager Jim Rutherford because of the cap situation. All right, from Twitter we have this. Even if we put Hornquist with Crosby, we need to make a trade to acquire another top six winger. Staggy See, says reason. we. Not sure what number he wears. Apparently, though, he's on the team. I think that uh, that actually was Crosby <laughs> who uh, sent the tweet. Now, you know, I, I don't get into the – I don't uh, claim to know enough about hockey to be telling the coach uh, one-fourth of the way into the season who should be on whose line or who would be better. I think one of the things about the, the NHL is that you have 81, 82 games to figure that out. Uh, they've reached about the 20 – the one-quarter pull right now. And uh, I, I just think you keep experimenting until you come up with the right combination with the idea that you have plenty of time to make a trade. The trading deadline isn't until the end of March. So I, I just don't think it's an urgent thing right now. But uh, Crosby not scoring a goal in 12 games is kind of interesting. And you have to find out if that's him or who he's playing with or not playing with. I'll be real quick. Jim, General Manager Jim Rutherford has a history of not waiting until the trade deadline okay. to make trades. Yeah, I, so, I know, right, no, no, right. no. He does. So they might do something sooner here. Yeah. Mark Cabali. I mean, didn't they already find out their top line? I mean, it wasn't it Crosby, Horn, uh, Hornquist, and Kunitz? Uh, they were pretty dynamic when they were together earlier in the season. And I think they need to go back with that. Crosby, you're talking about his struggles. I mean, uh, him, he and Hornquist work well together. They got good chemistry. Crosby likes wingers that can go to the net, and that's what Hornquist does. So I say put those two together, and I think, you're, I think you'll uh, help out Crosby, and you'll help out the top line, and you'll help, help out Hornquist. I think that's what you need to do. All right, moving on, Russell Martin, long gone now, which means the Pirates have some money to spend, right? So how should they spend it? How should the Pirates uh, take all that money and allocate it? Should it go to free agents or maybe signing current players to long-term deals? Uh, Staggy, I know you have an opinion on this. Well, it, uh, it depends on who the, the, uh, the free agent is and who the long-term player is. Um, I, I think they need to get some pitching. We have to see what's going to happen with Liriano and uh, Edison Volquez, and I, you know, the thing about the Pirates is they right now are not as good a team as they were last year, and they have to do, figure out a way to make moves to make themselves as good as they were last year. Part of that involves replacing Martin, which they're not going to be able to do, so they've got to get stronger somewhere else. And um, I, they made the decision that they're going to put, uh, apparently, Alvarez at first base, which is a, was one smart thing they did, which means their third base situation is settled too. But they have to find more starting pitching, and, that, and a lot of that is going to be determined by what happens with Liriano and Volquez, both of whom are probably gone, which will really put the Pirates in a tough spot. All right, from Twitter, Matthew has an opinion on the subject. A Neil Walker extension is an area that should be certainly explored. Rob, should that be a priority right now? I would, I would look to extend Neil Walker. I was in a wedding at PNC Park the other night. They wouldn't even turn the lights on, so I'm not real optimistic that they're going <laughs> to allocate, the, uh, <laughs> allocate the money here the right way. But look, to me, there is one thing and one thing you try to do this offseason. Talk to Garrett Cole's agent. I know he's a guy that doesn't like to do long-term deals early in contracts. Try to get Garrett Cole's name on a long, long-term deal right now. That would settle a, a fan base that thinks they're never going to be able to keep the majority of this group together. If they could get Cole's name on a long-term extension now, 
I think that would settle a lot of people, and that's very important for this ownership group. Mark Cavalli. Who says they're going to do anything? I mean, the history <laughs> says they're not going to do anything or not much of anything. But the thing is, if it's free agency, if it's one of their own guys, they have to do something with this money. I think everybody will be fine if they just sign Neil Walker to a long-term deal and, and don't bring anybody else in. But this money goes in Bob Nutting's pro uh, pockets. There's going to be an uh, absolute huge issue. I mean, what they really need to do is get a number two starter. If that's Francisco Liriano or somebody else, that's what they need to do first. But if they can lock up somebody else in lieu of that, that's fine. But be honest with you, I don't think, I mean, there's no guarantee that they're going to do anything with this money. And I don't know why any of us think they will. John Carlos Stanton just signed for $325 million. Is that there's what you make there, Stag? Somewhere around there. There's nothing, <laughs> there's no way on this earth that the Nutting family is ever going to give anybody $300 million. I couldn't, anybody. I couldn't get the lights on for wedding pictures <laughs> at the yeah. park. I'm not drunk. Not happening. That's well, a little more got a couple money extra million left. McCutcheon's making. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, he just got married, so I don't think he's watching. But he'd have had the lights on. All right. Our fourth topic tonight, comparing the programs, the football programs at Pitt and Penn State. Uh, which program is in better shape? Whose future would you rather have? This is an interesting question. Mark, start us off. Well, I, I think Pitt off the bat. If you're just going strictly personnel and, and players, I think it's Pitt because Pitt's offensive line is, is I think, really good. They got some uh, young players that they're going to move forward. I'm not 100% sure James Franklin's in this for the long haul. I could see him being a one or two years and done. I know it's going to help them that they're getting some of those scholarships back next year and, and they could be able to be better right now. But, you know, to be honest with you, it's either one of them. They're not a very good program, and I don't see them being in the upper echelon, but if you like put me down to take one, I'm just going to say Pitt because I like Paul Chris. I like how their offense runs and I like their youth. Uh, Penn State is just Hackenberg and really not much of anything else. All right. Uh, from Twitter, PSU will be in the national title hunt oh, next few no years. 107,000 fans. Pitt loses to Akron's of the world. Uh, Stag, their, their attendance is considerably lower as well. Uh, at Heinz Field than the uh, Nittany Lions have up at uh, Beaver Stadium. Yeah, they up at Beaver Stadium, and they would 100 100,000 would show up if they played Penn Hills. So that, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, there's not much. They, they're drawn from the entire state. That's a different argument. But when you're, if you're talking about the football program, uh, as as uh, Mark said, they are a young team. They're the youngest team in the country, I believe. Um, and Penn State, uh, Mr. Franklin seems, he's, he's kind of like a televangelist. He, he's, <laughs> he may be too slick by half to this Graham. point. I, I think, yeah, yeah, they had Todd Graham here. <laughs> and, I, and I think, I'll talk about that later uh, in the final word. I'll have a, a comment on that. But no, I, I think that they're both in, tr in, in, in a little bit of trouble. But I think Pitt, because they're in, in the ACC, has a better future because it's, a, it's an easier conference to be good in. Than the All right. Big Ten is. Uh, Rob, you're, you're allowed to mention West Virginia only because we. <laughs> I could, well, one of our one of our tweets did exactly if, that. But if, go ahead. If football is being played in September and October, it's West Virginia. But once November <laughs> comes around, not so. This is a very easy answer. Penn State will spend more money on football. Therefore, Penn State will be better at football. Pitt's biggest problem right now with the football program is its athletic director. He has to go. The chancellor has to bring in somebody who understands where to take this program. Until they do that, they will be, be they will be what they are, which is middling at best. All right. When we come back, everybody gets the final word. What will it be? Stay with us for that.